Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, then just keep watching. And make sure you stay tuned because at the end, I will be announcing my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I cannot believe I've hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel or left me a comment or just watched my videos. I truly, truly appreciate it. And so I'd like to do just something small as a small way of saying thank you so much. So again, stay tuned to the end for that. Now let's get into this week's What's for Dinner. For dinner this night, I made barbecue macaroni and cheese. I've made this a few times and we really enjoy it. I got this from Living That Mama Life. I'll include a link to her channel in the description box below. To get started, I'm going to cook some of this rotini pasta according to the package instructions. I will drain that and set that aside. I have this pot over about medium heat. I'm going to add in my butter and allow that to melt. And just a quick note, I am having the recipe for this. Next, I'm going to add in my flour, and then I'm going to whisk that together and cook that for about a minute. Next, I'm going to whisk in my milk, and I know most of you know this, but just in case you've never made a roux before, when you do this, a lot of times this will look a hot mess. It will look clumpy, and you'll think, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? You didn't. Just keep whisking it, and you will whisk out all of those lumps, and then after a few moments, this will start to thicken up. Next, I'm going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper. Next, I'm going to add in the cream cheese, and the cream cheese in this really makes the cheese sauce nice and creamy. Now I'm going to whisk that together a little bit and allow the cream cheese to melt. Now I will add in my shredded cheddar cheese, give that a stir, and allow this to melt as well. Next, I'm going to add in the barbecue sauce. And then I'm going to stir in my meat. Now I'm using some leftover pulled pork that my mom and dad gave to me. You can use leftover pulled pork if you have it. You could also use leftover barbecue chicken or just shredded rotisserie chicken. That would also be really good. So I'm going to stir the meat in and then add in my cooked and drained pasta. I will stir that together really well. And then you want to make sure that you taste this and adjust this to your taste. You might want to add a little bit more barbecue sauce. And then here are the finished plates. So we weren't super hungry this night. We just had the mac and cheese, but you could also serve this with a side salad or your family's favorite vegetable. This is a really quick and easy dinner to put together. It took less than 30 minutes. Tonight for dinner, I'm making a sheet pan balsamic chicken. I've made this a couple other times and we enjoy this. To get started, I'm going to make the marinade for the chicken and veggies. So here I have two large chicken breasts that I just sliced into tenderloins. I didn't have any chicken tenders. You can use either or. In this measuring cup, I'm going to add in my olive oil. And you can make this in a bowl as well. I just like to use the measuring cup so that I can pour it into the bag. Now I'm going to add in the balsamic vinegar, a package of the Italian dressing mix, and then some garlic powder. And I will include the recipe for this in the description box below. I'm going to whisk that together really well and then put about two thirds of that in with the chicken breast, give that a shake, and then I'm going to allow this to marinate. The longer you let it marinate, of course, the better it is. If you only have 30 minutes, that's fine. But if you have a couple hours, that's even better. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees, and next I'm going to get started on my veggies. So I'm going to take this zucchini. I have washed all of my produce. I'm just going to slice that and then add that to my cookie sheet. Next, I'm going to add some baby carrots, and you can totally customize these vegetables. Use whatever you and your family like. Now I'm going to take some baby red potatoes, and I sliced the large ones into quarters. The smaller ones I just sliced in half. I'm going to add those to the cookie sheet as well. Next, I'm going to add some red onion. You could also use yellow or white. I'm just using what I have on hand. I'm going to add that to my sheet pan. And then you'll also need some cherry tomatoes, but you don't want to add these right now. Just go ahead and set those to the side. So to my vegetables, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Give that a toss, and then I'm going to spread the vegetables out onto my sheet pan into a single layer, and then cook these in the preheated oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll add the chicken. Good. 
After about 15 minutes, I'm going to remove the sheet pan from the oven. I'm gonna to toss the vegetables around a little bit and then move them to the edges to make some room in the center for the chicken. I'm going to add the chicken to the center and I don't believe I showed it on here, but I did sprinkle a little bit of salt over the chicken. I'm just going to spread the chicken out a little bit and then I'm going to add the cherry tomatoes to the vegetables. Then I'm going to take the remaining third of the vinaigrette that we made earlier and marinated our chicken in. I'm just going to take that and drizzle that over the vegetables. And then I'm going to place this back into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the chicken is 165 degrees. And here's the finished dinner out of the oven. And here are the finished plates. We have the chicken and the vegetables. This is so good. It's so flavorful. I recommend you give this recipe a try. For dinner this next night, I really needed something quick and easy. We had worked super late, so I dug through my freezer and I found this box of turkey burgers that I needed to use up, so I'm going to make those. And then I have these curly fries from Kroger. I'm just going to cook those in my air fryer. So to cook the turkey burgers, I just did it on my George Foreman grill. I just seasoned both sides of them with some seasoned salt. Here are the turkey burgers. We ran out of ketchup. We had just enough ketchup for my husband's burger. So I did barbecue sauce and some French's fried onions on my burger. And then because we didn't have any ketchup for our fries, I just warmed up some of the Fritos cheddar cheese dip to dip our curly fries in. For dinner this next night, I made roasted chicken. Quick warning, if raw meat or watching other people handle raw meat grosses you out, you'll probably wanna fast forward a little bit. To get started, I've preheated my oven to 425 degrees. I've removed the giblets from the chicken and patted it dry really well. If you have a roasting pan, you can use that. I don't have one, so I'm just using this casserole dish with a wire rack in the bottom. I'm going to season the cavity of the chicken with some kosher salt, some pepper, and some thyme. The recipe calls for fresh thyme. I didn't have any, so I just used dried. Now, anytime I'm making something like a roasted chicken or a Thanksgiving turkey, I always try to have everything that I'm going to need already out and prepared for me. That way, I'm not having to touch the raw chicken and then touch something else, or I'm not having to wash my hands 50 times. It just makes it a lot easier. So as you can see, I've already portioned my seasonings and everything out, and I've got it ready for me. Now I'm going to add in some onion, lemon, and some garlic. And this garlic I just sliced in half. And I forgot to mention this, but this is Ina Garten's perfect roast chicken recipe, and it is so good. I don't exactly follow her recipe because she calls to add like fennel and carrots and onions to the roasting pan so that you can have the chicken and vegetables. I don't do that. I just do kind of a simplified version. So now I flip my chicken over. I've got a couple tablespoons of melted butter. I'm going to brush that over the back of the chicken, season it with salt and pepper, and then I'm going to flip it back around. I'm just tucking the wings under the chicken, and then I'm going to brush the remaining melted butter all over the front side of the chicken. I'm going to season that with salt and pepper as well. And after I've got my chicken in the oven, I will discard all of the seasonings that I haven't used and make sure that I disinfect everything really well. Again, anytime you're handling raw chicken or poultry or really any raw meat, you always want to make sure you do that. Now I'm just taking some kitchen twine and I'm just wrapping the legs together. If you don't have any twine, you can just use some aluminum foil. This goes into the preheated oven for about an hour to an hour and a half. It just depends on how large your chicken is, but you wanna make sure that you cook it until it's at least 165 degrees, and then you'll wanna let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes before you carve it. I had some homemade rolls in my freezer that I meant to set out, but I forgot. So I had just seen Tamara over at Southern Wife Everyday Life make some, she called it mayonnaise rolls or easy rolls, um, here recently in a video. And they look super easy and I had everything, so I decided to give it a try. It was so easy to put these together. It was just four ingredients. You basically just add some self-rising flour, milk, mayonnaise, and a little bit of sugar. You mix all of that together. 
place that into a muffin tin, and then you bake that. I believe it was at 350 degrees, but I will include a link to her channel in the description box below, so be sure to check that out for the recipe. Um, but you just bake those, and I think they take like 12 to 15 minutes, but they were actually pretty good. They don't taste exactly like a yeast roll, obviously, because there's no yeast, but it's like a cross between a yeast roll and a biscuit. They were really good, so I recommend you give these a try. It's really good to have this on a quick night like this where you just want like a quick roll and you don't have time or you really just don't want to fool with doing like a full yeast roll. And here is the roasted chicken out of the oven. Is this not golden brown and gorgeous? Like I said, I've made this a few times before and it's always come out perfect. And of course it fits the title, the perfect roast chicken. And again, I'm just going to allow that to cool for a little while before I cut into it. And here are those rolls out of the oven. Again, these were really good. They were very soft and tender, and we just served these with some butter, but I think these would be really delicious with the honey butter. Here are the plates. We have the chicken, those rolls, and then for the sides, I made corn pudding and au gratin potatoes. Those two side dish recipes will be in an upcoming video, so be sure to check that out to see how I made those. Dinner was delicious. This week for us was super busy, so for this night, we just did Mexican takeout. My husband had a steak burrito. This was ginormous. He had to eat the rest of it for lunch the next day, and then I just did a pork salad, so that was dinner this night. This next night was another super busy night for us, so I just did some quick turkey bacon ranch sandwiches. I didn't film me actually making it because it's really kind of easy to make. You're just basically making a sandwich, but here's what I used. I had these brat and sausage buns. I had some pre-cooked bacon, some turkey breast, a few slices of this provolone cheese, some ranch dressing, aroma tomato that I sliced up, and then some shredded iceberg lettuce. So I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees. I've just taken the buns. I added some turkey, some of the pre-cooked bacon, the provolone cheese, and then I'll place this into the oven for about five to seven minutes or until the cheese is melted and the bread is nice and toasted. I removed that from the oven and then added the lettuce, tomato, and ranch dressing. And then that's it. That's super easy. So to go along with it, I just had some leftover loaded baked potato salad that I got from the deli at Kroger. And then my husband had some sun chips. Quick and easy dinner, but really delicious. For dinner this night, we ordered pizza. We normally don't eat out for dinner a whole lot. We do maybe once every couple of weeks, but especially not twice in the same week. But my little sister came over to spend the weekend with us, and I let her choose whatever she wanted for dinner, and she chose pizza. So we ordered a couple of medium pizzas from Papa John's and then some wings, and that was dinner this night. And we also had leftovers for lunch the next day. And now for the giveaway information, and I apologize, I wanted to film an announcement for this, but I just didn't have a chance. So I'm going to put some information up on the screen. I am going to be doing a small giveaway, as I mentioned earlier in the video, for a thousand subscribers. Thank you so, so very much. And I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm so appreciative, again, to everyone who has subscribed to my channel or just watched a video or left a comment. It honestly means a lot to me. And again, I know this isn't a lot, but this is just a very small way for me to say thank you. So I will be giving away a $50 Visa gift card for the giveaway. You have to be subscribed to my channel and leave a comment down below on this video and it can be anything and then the third thing is that you do have to live in the united states hopefully on my next giveaway i'll be able to do an international one but for this one um you will need to leave in the united live in the united states so this giveaway will close on march 14th at 9 a.m central and at that time i will randomly select a winner and I'll reach out to you and let you know how to contact me to get you your gift card. And again, thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it and good luck. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.